welcome back. I'm glad you guys liked the first World Box video I made. Um, I'm glad anyone did. I didn't expect it to do so well. But I'm glad that videos that I'm actually putting effort into are getting views. But enough of that. Let's get into what you're here for. We're going to focus on the original world from last episode. It's called the World of Skulls and Man, which is going to be very fitting later on. Of course, we're going to go to other worlds, and I'm going to make an excuse to go to those worlds and introduce them. I'm planning on making it something based on the Nine Realms. I think that'd be something pretty cool. I guess we're just going to focus on what would be Midgard. It's a hundred years or so. It's got 363 people in it and 231 beasts. Or animals. The eight kingdoms, the eight cultures. Which I haven't gone into, but I don't think I'm going to go into it in this episode. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back into it. Alright, we're back where we left off. The Great Miona made it to the mainland. There's the realm of Shamari. They're struggling with the Rhino Human War at the moment. Over there are the orcs. They haven't done anything special yet. And there's the dwarves over here. Which haven't done anything special either. They built the first boat though. There's the little colony from Great Miona. Let's hope it doesn't end up like the Rona colony in the real world. It's starting pretty small, but that's how we all expected it would be. We have the king of the human kingdom, the current king. He's a Baku. I hope he's as good as DY. I highly doubt it. The humans are in control of the northern territory. The rhinos could start moving up, but they're going to stick with their southern territory. Their general is Sipiti. I call her the general because she has the most kills. And she's the one who impressed me the most. And we saw her mass murdering a bunch of citizens too, on screen. While we wait for Sapiti and Ibaku to make a move, we have the colony of the Great Miona, Iari. It's about six people right now, and it's on the coast of the Crystal Biome. I'm sure they can find a bunch of minerals. Not sure about the food, but it's World Box. The Great Aura has taken notice of this. I mean, how could they possibly have it? I'm sure they have the docks, but they need the boats, and then they're taking notes, I'm sure. I'm changing it to City View from now on, because the Kingdom View can only do so much. It doesn't display the borders. However, over here, it's not much of a problem with the humans. The animals don't have cities or kingdoms. It would be interesting if the beasts could do something like that. Anyone can tell that they have control of the plains and the ruins of the previous cities that the realm of Shamari has been trying to establish. So I can confirm that the Great Ora has the docks, but I don't think they have the boats. They definitely don't have the boats. And oh, uh, Nen died. Now Nen's some guy who killed over an important rhino, but we didn't see that on screen, unfortunately. And the Great Ura is getting on their way. They have built the Lure Tin, their first boat for expeditions, I suppose. Colonization. They have three people over there. The colony is... Done. The colony is called Done. Okay. So they settled on the Lemon Biome. And I'm definitely going to fix this little thing with the biomes going on. I don't want that to happen yet. So, canically speaking, the Lemon Biome was not overtaken by the Crystal Biome. I guess that's just vegetation rules. But I don't want that to happen yet. That will happen eventually, but not now. Even though the Great Aura came in second, I think they got the better biome, since not everything is made out of crystal there, and they're continuing their colonization. Now I, they're going further south. I'm not sure if it's going to drop anyone off. Definitely not on that island. And yeah, they dropped someone off. They dropped three people off, but they seem to be traveling now north. So they're sticking to the lemon biome. I don't know if I'd call lemon a good food source, but I'm def they definitely have the better soil down there. The undead sailors make a return. With the raids that failed so horribly, they escaped over here. And they're going to give the elves problems. Remember that there's only like six elves down here. And there's only like 12 skeletons down here. I don't know. That's an uneducated guess. And a special guest appearance from Muswelheim, Evil Asthma. He has come here to this world to wreak havoc, and I don't think he's going to wreak much havoc at all. But I'm going to keep tabs on him. Forget about it, guys. He got completely demolished. I was looking for the run dead sailors, and then I received the notification on the left that's saying he already died six minutes into his entrance. How is that even possible? His killer is Icyonic, one of the cold ones. They remind me a lot of the Hellwalkers from God of War, but if you guys have a better name, feel free to comment down below. By the way, a random frog spawned on top of here. I... 
I have no idea how he got here. I have no idea why he would spawn here. And I did not place him. That I can confirm. This was completely random. So he's a primordial frog from long ago. His name is Jinping and he's going to have some of the best abilities in the game. Jinping is a mythical magical frog. He is blessed with primordial powers and blessed with the powers of the Loveland frog from Ohio. He is an absolute unit that other units pray to. He'll have some plot relevance, I, I promise. I gave the colony some time to grow, a year or so. Dunn has 13 people now and has more territory than Aari, but Aari has 21 people. Great Ora has been the one that keeps sending more and more ships, but there hasn't been anything big yet. In the time lapse, you can see how the Dunn colony gets bigger in both territory and population, while Aerari stays more or less the same. Overall, Great Miona has more population than Great Ora, but that doesn't mean Great Ora is in a bad spot. They're actually pretty good, and they're already catching up. When the children grow up, they're either going to join the army, or they're going to help the civilization advance even more. Moving on from this, we have the humans trying to rebuild the south. They established the city of... I'm not going to pronounce that. It starts... Their founder is Bessie. Eventually, I realized that the humans can't colonize because of the atrocity of a river that I made for them. Now I'm going to have to fix it and blame it on erosion and that. Bessie is already dead. Just like every pioneer before her, she got completely owned by the rhinos. That, that, well, at least someone's coming down here. Wait, what's going on? Wait, the king is down here too? Wait, what's going on? Oh my lord. So you're telling me the king and this guy came down here and savagely bid Sapir? Welcome to the team, Maprod. He is deceitful, gluttonous, and crippled. That doesn't seem much like a hero. But, I mean, we have always unexpected surprises down here. Ibaku has also proved himself to be a worthy king for his people. I'm not sure if I'm going to give him the immortality, though. I have to see more. Over here, the humans have established the city of Utes, but I can't pin down a specific founder. Oh, give me a break. What now? Oh, thank God. <laughs> it didn't hit anyone. That was close. The Great Ora decided that it would be a good idea to place their colony right next to Irari. Their Dun colony doesn't seem to be doing so well since it lowered in population, but some of them might have gone to Ora. The Great Miona didn't have a reason to start a war yet. They definitely have one now, because the Great Ora's colony is directly interfering with their expansion to the west. The people of Great Miona have been under the belief that it is their god-given right to continue to expand westward. And they saw it first. Going back on what we've seen, the Great Ora has gone from completely irrelevant to about as equal to the Great Miona, and now they're a considerable threat to the Great Miona and potentially the rest of the world. In response to this, the Great Miona decided to establish a colony further south, known as Omhel. Una is the official founder of the colony. He also teamed up with the natives, this one's called Lolao. They came out of hiding after the attacks of the undead sailors on their land. As you know, they traveled down here from their previous raid, and they still seem to be causing problems for the elves. The rhinos of course did notice the new city that the humans were building and are now staging their attack that they were considerably planning. Being populated by only citizens and children, it is an easy target for the rhinos. Over here we have one going against a woman. Oh no, there's already a- oh Christ. So they're teaming up on them. But over here you can see the difference in strength. One rhino is already way too much for two citizens to take on. And they don't seem to be doing any damage to him at all. Just to give you a perspective on how OP they are in comparison. This rhino's name is Meggie. And she seems to be taking over Sapiti's role as the general. What's shocking is that Ibaku didn't call the army to go in at all. Instead, it was all down to Aparoth. He was going right in with no hesitation, and he was going alone as well. However, by the time he got there, Yutz was only down to one person, and he decided to move on. The last remaining member of Yutz was a child named Map, who stood no chance against the rhinos and was completely brutalized. 
but this story was far from over. Aparad was going to take revenge for the city that was destroyed and avenge all the previous founders. He went back to find him and he was chilling over here in the house and he wasn't gonna let that slide. Abroad could also call the healing of the gods on command, but it also affected the rhinos just to keep it fair. And with that, Aparod reached legend status among the humans. The city of Gashio. Do I wonder how this is gonna end? Also, by the way, where the, where were you, Yuli? Huh? Where the hell were you, boy? I I don't know. I want to see Yuli. Get the hell out! No, no, go away, go away. I want to see Yuli. Come on, Yuli the useful, more like Yuli the useless. Where the heck were you, boy? You were wasting our space and breathing our air. Get out of here, man! If you weren't going to come, then why did you join the army? Ah, oh, damn it! All right. Oh my God, I've calmed down, but let's let's go back with the situation with the elves. Currently, the Great Aura has more territory than the Great Miona, and in terms of population, they're more or less the same. Right now, it's more of a competition on who can take the most land. Both kingdoms are focusing on the Lemon Biome and the Crystal Biome. Right now, Umhel hasn't been completely blocked yet and is still able to expand. As for the other colony, it's been completely blocked in every direction. So, Great Miona has to establish some colony up in the north or maybe preferably the south. Then again, if they go to the north, they can try to block Ara, but I guess they can only do so much. Also, Great Ara doesn't have to send ships anymore. The citizens and the colonies can just expand westward. And over here, Great Miona is already sending a ship. I mean, I guess they're already scouting the rest of the island, but imagine how insane that would be to see all that territory that you could potentially take. And of course, the Great Aura has already established another village somewhere else. And the Baku just died. I'd be sadder, but this is the same guy who ignored to send the army. He had his moment though, so remember that. Keep that in mind. It seems like they decided to move the port away from the river and decided to establish it over at the coast instead. Over down in the south, the war is going to rage on now that the rhinos have stepped into the village yet again. And they're completely destroying the humans left and right, just as always. I can see that it's going to go down exactly the same way, but I wanted to make it a little bit more exciting. So we all know that the rhinos are lethal animal, like no kidding. I mean, he dominates the humans in every single way possible. But let's say another savanna creature tried to see if he could do anything about it. So let's say the hyenas who were living up in the coast and were hiding away from the humans and the rhinos who destroyed them already. So they're going to try to see if they can reap some territory in the middle of the conflict since they're so since the humans are so focused on fighting the rhinos and not them. You know they're just really taking over the houses and the humans. But that's really a bad decision because the rhinos are just going to pick them off one by one. If they don't attack the rhinos at all or at least try to team up on them, it's over. This has to be the most chaotic fight I've ever seen. I mean, it's really everybody against everyone. And of course, they're going to get even worse from here. Don't get me started. We've barely scratched the surface with what you can do here. I want to check on the new king because Ibaku died. Holy crap! It's a, it's Abra. The old guy. The, the, no, 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 no. The, what? The guy. The guy. The guy. The legend. Yes. You can't believe that he actually got to the king. But what does that mean? Does that mean that he was a relative of Ibaku? I mean, I don't really know how it works. But that's exciting. That's good to know. At least he's actually going to be a main character from now on. If he was a relative of Ibaku to some capacity, then that means he was. He could have been sent by Ibaku, or he could have just gone on his own. And now he's sending the army. They're on their way. 
mean, the, they're gonna get there a little bit too late. So I'm gonna start putting a bit more hyenas. Well, that's really anticlimactic. I, I really expected some big battle to happen or something, but they're not doing anything about it. It's really just a, it's the citizens against the rhinos. The army really barely does anything. The elven relations of the north have completely gotten out of control. The Great Ora has officially declared war on the Great Miona. It did it on the August of the year 144. But this is extremely unexpected. I thought Great Miona was going to declare war first because the Great Ora is limiting their expansion plans. But then again, you can't forget that Yunamoa is still the queen, even 144 years later. That means her goals haven't changed and maybe her original plan was to take over eventually. But now all the buildup has finally paid off, and we can stop with the speculation and get into what everybody comes for when we watch a world box video. The wars. So I'm guessing that it's leaning towards Great Ora here. They definitely have the advantage in territory, but I'm not sure in population. They seem pretty even. They could take that colony over there by the south, but I think the fighting is going to start right with Iari. Look at Iari! It's screwed in every direction, and of course the Great Miona is already sending the army. So the strategy is to just attack, defend, do something about Ara. As for Ari, it's doing a pretty good job. It's already taken over 5% of the city, and if it keeps going like this, maybe it'll be okay. Alright, forget about it. The Great Miona's attack failed miserably. Great Ora was able to defend because they had a good amount of the army over here. And Una, one of the founders of the other colonies, is already dead. People are dropping like flies. Oh, and the city, a human city actually, not with the, not concerned with the war. It's already down. It went just as I expected. Alright, I'm checking up on her. She seems to be a member of the army. But looking at the army of the Great Ora, you can tell which kingdom was planning this. They already took over Amhel. I just realized that Erari had a completely atrocious plan. They sent all of the adults and I'm guessing the entire army of the city and left all the children to try to fend for themselves because I don't see any adults anywhere, I just see the children and they're getting completely owned by the army of the Great Ora. my god. It's not going down as fast as I expected. The percentage is still 5% conquered. There's only children and there's only that one warrior and he's already taken down. Bad. Of course, they're going after the capital right now. Whoa, 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 wait, what is going on? This is too much. Dunn is already rebelling, but why? On what? I guess it took advantage of the war. But then that means, that means that Great Ora did the same thing Britain and Spain did. It did not take care of its colonies. Their name is the Eon Keepers. I guess they're the Independence Keepers. But just to keep it simple, we're going to call it the Revolution. I found the leader, his name is Araore, he's the leader of the revolution, but I have no idea, he just kind of like walked in, I'm guessing he's like a founding father of their- He's- he has the bottle what now? Okay, forget about it. I- usually revolutions don't last that long, but if it can do anything for Great Mionas, maybe shift the attention away, but its colonies are gone, and Great Mionas practically screwed, they have that little colony over there, way way in the south. It doesn't seem to be looking so well, but I mean, I guess he's doing a good job at defending it. I'm 
my good God, they really are dying for the cause. I mean, so they, I guess it's working because the great Miona's capital is still standing on its feet. That means great Ora has to shift his attention away from them and has to look over at the revolution, see how it's going. God, I just had to say it, didn't I? I just have to say, I just had to say it. Yeah, there you go. They're gone. The revolution is practically over. I mean, they just have to take over that little city and they haven't, from both sides, there's no hope for the revolution. It's just a matter of time. What I find funny is that Angel, even though they didn't start it, they're so dedicated to continue fighting back. I mean, you can see them trying to retake Dunn, you know, but it's interesting to think that Dunn actually convinced them somehow that, you know, they should rebel instead of, oh, god damn. Oh. <laughs> no matter how much creatine I have, these demons keep coming back and they went straight for Great Miona. That's over. See, see, that's it. It's over. Great Miona is done. That is the conclusion to the war. Great or not, this is not a victory for them. I mean, the river is the only thing protecting them. And I guess Nyamoa could put up a good fight, but that's it. Okay, maybe they did, but they're going to take down the revolution for sure. The king is gone. This general, no, 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 this member of the army already took it down. Five percent, percent of the way there. It's a matter of time and Miona's in shambles. The capital is in shambles. Forget about it. Yeah, there you go. The percentage is rising. 32, 43, 40, no, 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 50, 50, 60, 60, yeah. There you go. The revolution has been stopped completely. And uh, there's still one person left from Great Miona. It's fair to say that the Great Oral won, if it wasn't obvious enough. The capital of the Great Miona is gone completely, and there's that little colony all the way in the south of 16 people, but they're just regular ordinary folks. They're not going to kill anybody. Normally, in a grounded show, this would be the end, but this is my show, and this is World Box. And the queen, Nefadio, is still around, and she wants revenge. Originally, she was just a citizen, sent out to scout for another colony so that the Great Miona could try to flank the Great Ora. So originally, Great Miona was going to prepare a counterattack, but then the demons came in and they ruined absolutely everything and changed the course of history. But Nofadio is still around, and she wants revenge mostly against the demons, but also Great Ora. She's aware she can't take on any of them, so instead she takes on a, another trip. She goes to the desert. Great desert below the enchanted land. Nofadio proceeds to go and strike a deal with the gods, who at first are hesitant to accept anything, but eventually they reach an agreement. If she can pass their test, they will give her the powers of mass destruction. In the upcoming episodes, we'll see the journey of Nofadio the journey that she will take and how it will affect the rest of the world. In the next few episodes, and yes, the next few episodes, you're going to see the struggle of the colonies in its entirety. It's not exactly going to be a simple 1v1, and there's a bunch of creatures running around so there's bound to be chaos. But that's what you're here for. As for the other kingdoms, they need to get a move on. Because as far as we've seen, the elves are clearly dominating. And if it keeps going like this, their numbers are going to go up, Maybe the war might slow them down, but they're going to be the only ones left. Until next time.